Qudud punishments in Islamic law are those that are considered to be fixed by Allah Himself in the Quran and Sunnah. As such, they cannot be relaxed or mitigated without, in the eyes of many, sinning against Allah. Most Qudud punishments are specified in the Quran itself. For example, amputation of the hand for theft. As to the thief, the Quran says, male or female, cut off his or her hands, a punishment by way of example from Allah for their crime, and Allah is exalted in power. Crucifixion is actually specified in the Quran, as well as amputation or exile for those who are considered to be waging war against Allah and Muhammad. Now you think about that, that's a very elastic concept, waging war against Allah and Muhammad. The punishment, it says, of those who wage war against Allah and his messenger and strive with might and main for mischief through the land is execution or crucifixion or the cutting off of hands and feet from opposite sides or exile from the land. That is their disgrace in this world and a heavy punishment is theirs in the hereafter. Lashing for illicit sex is also set out in the Quran. The Quran says the man and the woman guilty of adultery or fornication flog each of them with a hundred stripes. Let not compassion move you in their case in a matter prescribed by Allah, if you believe in Allah and the last day, and let a party of the believers witness their punishment. Now let not compassion move you in their case is already departing from any idea of God as genuinely merciful and compassionate, but it gets even worse in a hadith where the Caliph Umar, one of Muhammad's closest companions, said that the penalty for adultery was not lashing at all, but was actually stoning to death and even maintained that that was what was originally in the Quran, although he doesn't explain how it dropped out. According to a hadith, Umar said, I am afraid that after a long time has passed, people may say, we do not find the verses of the Rajam stoning to death in the holy book, and consequently, they may go astray by leaving an obligation that Allah has revealed. And so Umar adds, lo, I confirm that the penalty of Rajam be inflicted on him who commits illegal sexual intercourse if he is already married and the crime is proved by witnesses or pregnancy or confession. The Hadith goes on to say that another one of Muhammad's followers, Sufyan, added, I have memorized this narration in this way. In other words, it's another authoritative witness. Umar added, surely Allah's apostle carried out the penalty of Rajam, and so did we after him. Because of course in Islam, Muhammad is the excellent example of conduct. The crime of false accusation of adultery or rape is also to be punished with 80 lashes, as per the Quran. And those who accuse chaste women and then do not produce four witnesses, lash them with 80 lashes, and do not accept from them testimony ever after, and those are the defiantly disobedient. Drinking alcohol is also to be punished with 80 lashes. That comes from a hadith. Anas ibn Malik reported that a person who had drunk wine was brought to Allah's apostle, that is Muhammad. He gave him 40 stripes with two lashes. Abu Bakr also did that, but when Umar assumed the responsibilities of the caliphate, he consulted people and Abd al-Rahman, another follower of Muhammad, said, the mildest punishment for drinking is 80 lashes, and Umar thus prescribed this punishment. Another hadith has Muhammad himself saying, if he's intoxicated, flog him. If he's intoxicated again, flog him again. If he's intoxicated a third time, flog him. And if he does it again a fourth time, kill him. These punishments are not considered to be open to mitigation as they are commanded by Allah or Muhammad. And the Quran repeatedly tells Muslims to obey Allah and his messenger. And so to this day, wherever Sharia law is fully in force, these punishments are enforced upon the populace, creating an empire of fear which is what Sharia actually is.